Good morning. Good morning. And, and welcome, welcome to Melton Vineyard Sunday, Sunday service. service. It's snowing, everybody! <laughs> Good morning. Today's service is a little different from usual. It's our Vision Sunday, which happens every year around this time, and it's where we share what we believe God is saying to us about the year ahead and reflect on the year just gone and what a year it's been. As I've looked back over 2020, I've been excited to realise that even while the country's been in lockdown, God has been enabling us to be as active and it's engaged within the wider community as ever. So why don't we begin by thanking him for that. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your love and faithfulness to us in 2020. Thank you for your love for Melton and the surrounding area. Thank you for the ways in which you've encouraged us and enabled us to be your people where you've placed us. Lord, for everything we got right in the last 12 months, we thank you and we give you the glory. For everything we got wrong or missed, we ask your forgiveness and we dedicate ourselves again to seeking your way forward for 2021. In the name of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So, each Vision Sunday, we look at the church vision statement and we see how it matches up with what's been happening over the year. We believe God is at work in every person's life and we want to be involved in recognising, developing and celebrating that. One of the challenges of 2020 was trying to discern what God was doing and saying in the COVID-19 crisis. We don't believe God deliberately causes suffering but we do believe he can use suffering to speak to us, to challenge us and to shape us. And I've been really struck by the ways in which God has redirected our original vision for 2020 into new and unexpectedly fruitful channels. I mean, the fact that we've had to move our services online has been frustrating and challenging, but it's also meant that we've connected with more people than if we'd stayed put in the building. Putting our small groups and other meetings online has stretched us in uncomfortable ways, but it's also made them more accessible to those who would otherwise have been unable to take part. We want to be and to make committed followers of Jesus, responsive to his teaching, committed to sharing our lives together and willing to serve both the church and the communities in which we live and work with generosity and authenticity. As followers of Jesus, gathering together for worship and for community is so important to us. So the constraints of the last nine months have been frustrating. But as I've said, as soon as we put our Sunday services online, first on YouTube, then on Facebook, our numbers increased. From an average Sunday attendance of about 150 adults and children last January, the average number of weekly views for our online services in December has grown to about 500. That's 500 screens, of course, which means the number of people viewing would have been more than that. We've followed up each service with share and prayer together, and we've also offered a monthly family service and Young Vineyard Live event. So here are some reactions to all of these new initiatives. So we love the Sunday service. Uh, we usually watch it later, so not live, but uh, that's so that we can fit it around family life, which is a real positive for uh, us. We've got a, oh gosh. Wanna... I really like the Sunday service online because it means I can connect wherever I am in the country. I can revisit it as well if I want to. I can have another think about the things that have been spoken about. And so we've done this regularly. We get ready on a Sunday morning and we're ready to go at half past ten to join with the rest of the church community. I'd just like to say how much I've enjoyed and been inspired by the Melton Vineyard online Sunday services and the children's services. Also, we've had some international vineyard 
speakers. I can think of Eleanor Mumford, Charles Montgomery and Putty Putman. One thing I like about the online services is my friends who don't know Jesus can actually hear and take part in church via Facebook Live. We took part for the first time in the Share and Prayer Zoom meeting after the Sunday service. It was great, really great to see so many faces that we hadn't seen for a long time. Yes, it was. And then in the breakout room, we were able to catch up with each other, uh, to pray for one another and encourage one another. And it was a very positive experience. And we just want to recommend that everybody comes and joins in. Um, so I think the family services have been amazing, just the way that people have really been, you know, kind of who maybe haven't even met us more than a couple of times have been so, just so welcoming. And uh, I've enjoyed Susanna the Shepherdess. You enjoyed Susanna the Shepherdess. You yeah. loved that, didn't you? We rewound it four times. We just so we couldn't get to the end of the service. We had to keep going back. Oh. Um, and you've loved the 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 craft bits as well. Yeah. You with the family services. You... Yeah, like the clay models. We've enjoyed the live services. Josh has really enjoyed that and doing interactive things. Usually because he gets good snacks when we do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we've really enjoyed those as well. I think the um, the yeah the practical stuff keeps them busy and keeps them engaged, and it's not just sitting and watching something on Zoom for half an hour. It's actually them doing lots and lots of stuff. We also moved our weekly small groups online, and we saw growth here too. The number of people who belonged to one or more groups at the start of last year was 107. By December, it was 122. The groups have covered a range of topics from women in the Bible to couch to 5k, from soul keeping to listening to God through art. We ran the grace course, the marriage course and the parenting course for parents of 0 to 6 year olds. The weekly and monthly men's prayer breakfasts have continued on Fridays and Saturdays and there have been several women's prayer breakfasts as well. Participants of course had to provide their own food now that we're online. The youth have met online each Sunday morning and the girls 316 group has met regularly on Sunday afternoons as well. Throughout 2020, we continued to offer personal prayer ministry, sozo prayer ministry and prayer after each service. And God has continued to work in people's lives, even as they were being prayed for online or on the phone. And we made sure we were taking care of people physically too, by running a manual handling training session just before the first lockdown. We want to see God's kingdom extended in Melton and the surrounding area through the active power of God at work in people's lives and many more people coming to know the hope of Jesus. Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father, your kingdom come on earth. So we want to be an outward-looking church, serving and blessing the communities in which we live. With the support and help of many individuals, agencies, businesses and other churches, Storehouse has continued this year to supply food to those in need. Since Storehouse began operating from the Hope Centre in July, we've been able to give away almost 3,600 bags, that's 32,400 meals, which is approximately £38,000 worth of fresh and non-perishable food items. And that figure doesn't include toiletries, emergency clothing and bedding, or any of the Christmas treat boxes that were also distributed. And of course, just as the first lockdown was being announced, phase two of the Hope Centre refurbishment was nearing completion with the help of a grant from the National Lottery Community Fund and Storehouse was about to move into its new home. The restrictions meant that the move took a bit longer than planned, but it did happen in the end. And since the summer, we've been distributing bags from the new premises, and we're really looking forward to when we can open up the whole building again and use all of the new facilities. Breathing Space, our community listening service, has been operating with a team of 19 listeners and two trainee counsellors 
who have received ongoing training throughout the year in managing depression and anxiety, bereavement, supporting survivors of sexual abuse or domestic violence and responding to suicidal thoughts and self-harm. Where appropriate, clients can be moved on to our trainee counsellors or referred back to their GP for further NHS support. During 2020, the service received 60 referrals and ran a total of 255 sessions, which happened face-to-face, -face, online and by telephone. Here's one person talking about their experience of breathing space. So how did you make contact, first of all, with breathing space? I think it was from my GP. So actually, he sent it off for me. He said that I'll get these people to get in contact with you, and that's from John, John Coleman. And uh, how have these sessions helped you? Well, they've helped me a lot. Um, I feel sometimes, now that I realise it, the more I talk about something, the better I feel. You know, getting it off my chest, I feel that's a big relief, holding something in for so long, and finally getting to talk to somebody about it, just get it, just letting it loose. Uh, the more I let it loose, the more I told more people that are important to me. You know, and it's, it's been a, a welcome release would you recommend breathing space to support the people? Yeah, of course. I think they're, they're pretty good. Um, and I think it would help anybody who's in the same similar situation as myself, or who's just really like, suffers from anxiety or depression or post traumatic stress. I think it's it, it given a, a boost of confidence and uh, put them in the right direction. And if anyone was thinking about contacting breathing space but was anxious or unsure, about doing it, what would you tell them? I'd tell them just to give it a try. You have nothing to lose, everything's confidential. Uh, there's no shame in asking for help. Uh, you know, that's the main thing is just getting that first step in and then is asking for help and you'll see that it's a lot easier going forward after that. So I feel that um, if you need help, ask for it, because you can get it. We want to get out into the community with God's love through acts of service rather than just expecting people to come to us. We want to be involved in serving the poor and seeing justice done. At the start of 2020 we just opened the New Hope Centre in Nottingham Street and were beginning to get a rolling programme of community events going. We had a sellout concert in February by singer-songwriter Sam Carter and then, well, then coronavirus happened putting a stop to that and to many other community focused activities such as Baby Cafe, After School Lego Club, Parent and Toddler Group, Jigsaw Club, English as a Second Language classes and so on. Nevertheless, we managed to run a second Baby Cafe in the autumn, which was just as popular as the first, though sadly now we've had to hit the pause button again, or at least until the vaccination programme has been rolled out more widely. There were many Blessing the Community initiatives in 2020, including giving out gifts to key workers at the local surgery and schools, and recording a nativity story that was shown in seven primary schools and watched by more than 1,300 children and 230 teachers and learning assistants. We also gave away 880 copies of the Bible Society book that accompanied that retelling of the Christmas story so that children could take them home to read with their families. We want to spread the good news about Jesus and to see the sharing of that message accompanied by healings and other demonstrations of God's power. We want to be an expression of God's church in Melton that is culturally relevant and genuinely attractive. We ran two Alpha courses last year, which are great places for sharing faith. We didn't know how Alpha would work online, but everyone taking part stayed with it to the end, and the Holy Spirit continued to work in people's lives again and again as we prayed for them over Zoom. Since Covid, obviously we haven't been able to pray for people in the marketplace as we normally do, for obvious reasons, but we have continued to pray for people to walk alongside them in difficult times and to share God's love with them. 
We want our worship to be contemporary, intimate and accessible. We want worship and prayer to be at the heart of everything we do. It's been a challenging year for worship. I mean, we love to get together to worship and sing, and we just haven't been able to do that. It's frustrating. And yet, many of us are learning to worship God in our own homes more consistently. Parents have had opportunities to worship more frequently with their children. Our worship leaders, our musicians, the PA teams have provided fantastic resources for our online services. There have been online prayer meetings, prayer breakfasts, share and prayer times after the service, online prayer rooms and prayer days. There were at least 96 prayer events in 2020, in fact, and the MV Prayer Facebook page continues to be a place where people can share needs and encourage each other. We want to be a church based in relationship. Where imperfect people, and that's all of us, can feel perfectly welcome. Well, obviously this too has been a challenge during the pandemic. But it's been really encouraging to see the ways in which people have supported and looked out for each other even in these challenging times. For instance, despite the problems, people have continued to provide meals for new parents and for those going through a time of illness. There have been social activities for all ages, including quiz nights, craft sessions, and particularly memorably, a pancake party in February for which 37 people signed up and 52 people actually came along. Work that one out. We want to be a socially, racially and culturally diverse church where people of all backgrounds and all ages can find a place to belong and a space to grow. The murder of George Floyd in the US back in May of last year was a catalyst for many churches to re-examine their attitudes in this area. Stanley, one of our church members, was brave enough to tell us his personal story of experiencing racism in this country. And many of us realised, perhaps for the first time, just how difficult it can be to be a person of colour in the UK. As a result, a group has been formed called Life in Colour for people of colour in the church and their partners to share experiences and pray together and ask some of the hard questions about how we can all move forward in this. I'm sure that many positive things are going to come out of that group over the coming year. We want to identify, train and equip leaders who will grow in their own gifts and encourage others to develop theirs. Well, this is an ongoing priority for us and we were able to train and release several new leaders last year who are now either leading groups or preparing to do so. We want to contribute to and share in the blessing of the wider church, both in the town and beyond. From the start of the pandemic, church leaders from across Melton have met and prayed together on a regular basis. And out of those meetings has come initiatives such as an online recording of the Passion Story, Pentecost prayer via Zoom, and a Churches Together prayer meeting also on Zoom in October. One of the great sadnesses of 2020 was having to cancel our plans to send another team to Honduras in the summer. Nevertheless, we were able to send project funds that had been raised for the trip so Iglesia Cristo Teyama, the church we support there, could continue their ministry to the poor and the boys' home that we support in La Saiba could provide treats for the children in their care. Then in November, after the country was hit by two hurricanes in rapid succession, causing widespread flooding and damage, you very generously donated almost £7,000 to help with the relief effort there. At the start of the disaster, we sent an immediate gift of £1,000. Then, with the funds raised, we sent further gifts of £2,500 to the church and £1,000 to the boys' home. Several weeks later, we sent another gift of £2,500. And then, only last week, having heard that Pastor Hector's house had been so badly damaged that all five members of his family had to move out and live together in a one-room shack with only two beds. 
we sent £4,000 to help with the repairs. So, as a result of your generosity, the hungry have been fed, homes have been rebuilt, and families in desperate need have been helped. I just want to read you a brief section of the message that Pastor Hector sent in response. Thank you so much. I received the news with great joy, and with great joy I give glory to God for his wonderful answers to prayer. I continue to bless all of you in Melton Vineyard. My family and I are so grateful. I love you with all my heart in the eternal love of Jesus. I send our hug and greetings to everyone there in Melton, England. What a privilege to be able to offer that kind of support and encouragement. And we want to do all of this in the power of the Holy Spirit. We know we need God's help to do all of this stuff. As we've exercised natural and supernatural gifts, we've seen people being healed through prayer, we've grown in faith, and we've listened to God for his prophetic encouragements to us. For example, in our September prayer meeting, someone shared a word that they felt God had given them, that God wants to get people's attention in this time. At the beginning of lockdown, people were seeking after God, but then it tailed off. If a more extreme lockdown happens, it will be God trying to get people's attention back again. He loves them so much, it's like taking away other distractions. If that happens, that's what we should be praying for. Another word that was given was, even though we're waiting on decisions, restrictions changing, etc., I felt God saying, I don't change. I am who I am. Even if everything else is shifting, he is the constant. We need to hold on to him. Which feels like a good moment to pause and worship.
As well as looking at the vision statement, we also think back at this time of year to the specific priorities we believe God gave us for 2020. This time, last year, I said we were going to focus on three things in the year ahead. Family, prayer and gospel. We believed it was going to be important to nurture and develop a greater sense of family in the church in 2020. And boy, was that true. It just didn't pan out quite how we'd imagined it. We thought we'd be putting on lots of family events, but instead we found ourselves having to learn how to create a sense of family in a totally new and unexpected environment. We faced the challenge of having all the things we took for granted snatched away, and we discovered how to be family when we weren't able to meet together physically. So things like the share in prayer after the Sunday service have been really important for connecting people. The family services and Young Vineyard Live events, the small groups, the prayer groups, the opportunities to serve in storehouse and breathing space and other ministries have all contributed to that sense of family. I mentioned particular attitudes we need to avoid. Gossip, judging others negativity, complaining, making excuses, embroidering the truth, and dogmatism, or confusing our own personal opinions with facts. And I spoke about attitudes we needed to adopt. Honesty, authenticity, integrity, and love. There were challenges here too, especially as more of our conversations moved online. The Apostle James wrote, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. People should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. He was thinking of how we speak to each other face to face, of course, but the same principles apply when we speak online. Here too, we should be quick to listen, slow to post, slow to become angry, and give thought to the ways in which we express our views and opinions. If our Guiding principles for these and other conversations are love for our brothers and sisters in the family of God and respect for everyone. We won't go too far wrong. 2020 was a test for all of us and certainly provided plenty of opportunities for prayer. Often they were prayers of desperation or lament. But for some, at least, the enforced shutdown of day-to-day activities afforded an opportunity to go deeper into spiritual disciplines, such as silence and solitude. And there are some great prayer resources available to help with this. And if you haven't tried the Lectio 365 app, that's one I would definitely recommend as a powerful aid to personal prayer. I'll come back to prayer again in a moment. I spoke about how difficult it can be for people to come into our spaces. I mean, just to walk into a church service when you don't know anyone is really hard. And I talked about ways in which we could make that a bit easier for people. Little did we know that instead of helping people to come into our buildings, God was going to push us out of them and into the wider community in new ways. And it is a community that is in turmoil. There have been so many pressures and needs in the last year that no one expected to encounter. A lot of people still don't know that Jesus is the answer to all those needs, but they're asking questions, and it's a great time to share the hope we have as Christians, which really is good news for a hurting world. And I believe that those three priorities, family, prayer and gospel, will continue to be central for us in 2021. We'll need to continue to find creative ways of being family, especially as long as the physical separation continues. We'll need to press into prayer, especially while the needs are so great. And we'll need to take whatever opportunities we get to share the gospel and have confidence in it. Clearly, It will be important to put intention and effort into maintaining and nurturing a sense of family for as long as lockdown continues. But there's more to it than that. Social media algorithms are pushing people into conversational echo chambers 
which reinforce and amplify their views and opinions whilst excluding those of others. Families, friendships, even marriages are being damaged by these kinds of social and political disagreements. We must resist this in the church. What unites us is greater than anything that would seem to divide us. In Vineyard especially, we've always placed a high value on not falling out over things that have historically divided the church. We have intentionally cultivated spaces in which it is possible to listen to each other and discuss issues and ideas with genuine respect, even when we disagree. And we've learnt how to disagree without splitting off into separate camps. Dallas Willard highlights the fallout that occurs when churches take a different approach. He writes, Christians are routinely taught by example and word that it is more important to be right, always in terms of their tradition, than it is to be Christ-like. There are now 33,800 different Christian denominations and they are all right. <laughs> well, these kinds of threats to unity have been around since the beginning of the church. Writing to the Corinthians, the Apostle Paul pleaded with them, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. While we're physically separated from one another as we are at the moment, it can become dangerously easy to forget the things we value and love about each other and focus almost exclusively on the things we find difficult. And then what about when we are finally able to meet together again in person? It's still far too early for any of us to know exactly when that's going to happen, but hopefully it will be sometime this year. And when that time does eventually arrive, there are some things I believe we'll need to focus on in particular. Helping children and youth reintegrate into church. It'll be difficult for all of us, of course, but especially so for our children and young people. Many of them are now out of the habit of being part of a church community and will need extra support and encouragement to reconnect. There'll be others who haven't even had the chance yet to experience what it means to be part of a loving church family. Starting slowly, as we meet together again, we're going to need to be kind to ourselves and to each other. Of course, we're, we're all looking forward to getting back together again and making a joyful noise, but we'll also need to reconnect with intimacy and worship, and not everyone will feel safe to gather again straight away. It will be important to take things slowly, I believe, and carefully, and not expect too much of each other in those early stages of coming together again. Embracing the new. We've learned some useful things in 2020. We've discovered how to do church in new ways. And while we will, of course, re-establish physical church and physical meetings as soon as it's safe to do so, we'll also think about how we might continue to offer some online meetings and online services so that they can continue to be accessible to as many people as possible. Taking responsibility for personal growth. The pandemic has been a reminder that each of us is responsible for our own growth as a disciple, no one else. Church can provide community, family and support, but growing as a follower of Jesus is something only we can choose to do. As one pastor I heard recently put it, at the moment I keep reminding the people in our church, you have the ball. I doubt whether any of us feel that we've arrived when it comes to prayer. Learning how to pray is a process that continues throughout our lives. But many of us find prayer difficult. The thought of coming to a prayer meeting or to the share in prayer after the service can be scary. I mean, what if I'm put on the spot? What if I don't know what to say or how to pray? So this year we want to be intentional in doing whatever we can to help with that providing a range of resources, experimenting with different ways of praying, trying to take the fear out of meeting together and building confidence in our personal prayer lives, 
remember, you've got the ball. One of the things we're going to try is see how we can make the church prayer meeting a little more accessible. Instead of praying together for an hour once a month, we're going to experiment just for a while with two half hour slots. One at the regular time of eight o'clock on the last Monday of the month and the other a fortnight later at 1.30 in the afternoon on the second Monday of each month. So there'll be no less prayer taking place, but hopefully by doing shorter slots more regularly, more people will be able to take part. And now, more than ever, is the time to have confidence in the gospel, the message, the good news about Jesus that's been entrusted to us, and in the resources God has given us to share the good news, above all, his Holy Spirit. If coronavirus has taught us anything, it is this. We are not in control of our lives in the ways we thought we were. In this last year, plans have been trashed, businesses have collapsed and hopes have been dashed. But the gospel tells us that God's plans will never fail. His kingdom will never collapse. And the hope we have in Jesus is solid and secure. And it's not when everything's going well that we discover this to be true, but when things are at their worst. Reflecting on possibly the most painful and difficult season of his life, the Apostle Paul wrote, I need to tell you, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. But as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and we learnt to rely only on God, who raises the dead. And he did rescue us from mortal danger, and he will rescue us again. We have placed our confidence in him, and he will continue to rescue us. Later in the same letter, he writes, We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. That is the gospel. That is our resurrection hope. And that is the vision that will sustain us through 2021 and beyond. Restoring us, oh we love
this week at the Vineyard National Gathering of Dallas Willard's excellent definition of a disciple. He describes a disciple as an apprentice who lives with, learns from and becomes like the master. And that's the call to all of us. That's the context in which this vision stuff is lived out. So that's our prayer for you this year and our prayer for ourselves. If you feel like God's given you any words or pictures during this talk, please email us with them at info at meltonvineyard.org.uk. We would love to hear them. And similarly, if you feel like God has inspired you to take action on any of the things Neil's talked about, we'd love to hear about that too. If you're watching this live and you'd like prayer for anything at all, then please text 079-7979-2132 and someone from our trained ministry team will get back to you. You don't need to say in the text what it's about, just say I would like prayer and someone from the team will phone you up and pray with you over the phone. Have a great week. God bless you and inspire you. <laughs>